since I've been sipping on Henny. I got the study in my vision, and she ain't from the city. And she ain't foreign, and she boring. Love the way you. What's up, everybody? I'm Evil Rabbit here on Torque Drift. So today's video is going to be answering a lot of questions I've been getting recently about, say, the setup on my car, as well as some of the sponsors. So there is a thing going on. There's a glitch with the sponsors where you get sponsors and then they disappear when you reset the game. Um, that is a glitch that Torque Drift knows about. They have let me know that they are making a fix for it, and uh, it should be fixed this week. And we should be getting all the sponsors that we lost back as well as stuff like that. So because I've been trying to get my own sponsor up here, but I can't. I always get to it and then I have to reset my game and then it doesn't. So a lot of people have been asking about, say, the Hakone uh, 1000 meter drift. It's actually not as complicated as some people think. Um, so just uh, for sake of that, we're going to go into a practice session to a cone and we're going to try and grab that sponsorship real quick because it did reset so i have to get it again so we are going to be taking my e46 which is about 955 horsepower you do need a bit of a higher horsepower car i think it makes it easier um i did get drift king level on that as well as my s14 so for this we're going to go into a practice session and there's two ways i found the easiest way to do it is starting right up top and then going down but making sure you don't crash and Basically, I like the bridge section and a couple turns after it. You can also do it coming up from the hidden pass track and get it as well. So we're going to go ahead and go ahead and start this off. We got to make sure we're going to get ourselves into fourth gear. And then basically we're going to kick it sideways and we're going to try and keep a nice smooth arc through the tunnel, kick it back and keep it going, drifting through the tunnel, e-brake up to, you know, keep ourselves sideways. Slow ourselves down towards the end of the tunnel so you don't go too fast and smack into the wall. Slow yourself down. I smack the wall. And you can just keep you can keep going this way and uh, continue the drift. But we're going to go from the bottom since I kind of messed up the upper one to try and show you guys it's not actually as complicated as some people are thinking. The drift does not take that long to do. And if you do it on this upper section or, say, the hidden hidden uh, path section, it's actually uh, quite easy to accomplish. See, I just started drifting this arc. Now, the only thing people are making the mistake of is if you do our switch bats like that, you have to make sure you drift a different, a good distance. Otherwise, it negates it and gives you the fishtail. So, you don't want to do too many switchbacks. You want to do like maybe one or two switchbacks and make sure you drift a little bit of a distance. So, we're going to flip it around here and see if we can't get it to go on the uphill section. Because uh, this is the easiest way I found it is to go up this hill. Um, like I said, you do need a little bit of a power in a car. So I have about 955 horsepower. You could probably do it with a lower horsepower car, but you would have to do a lot more clutch kicking. So we're going to start our drift at the bottom of the hidden path. Now, we, we have to uh, get this whole arc here, this whole bridge entrance, which is a good distance to start off the drift with. Nice e-brake in there. Now this is where I, this is where I said a little switchback is going to help. A little switchback one way, switchback the other way, but then you have to drift a certain distance. So make sure you drift a little bit, and then you can do another quick switchback. But you have to make sure you drift a little distance. And I actually hit the wall, which is going to negate it. But we still should be able to get it up this section as long as we can do this whole this whole turn and the other two turns in the tunnel. We still should be able to get it. Because a hundred, a thousand meters is not as long as people think. No, nope, we're not going to get it because we uh, didn't switch back enough. So we're going to try and go back up top and do it. But this is the easiest section I found to do it. Um, I know it's probably, uh, you know, counterintuitive telling you guys this when I'm not actually getting it. Um, but I promise you, I've gotten it. So we're going to try and do it one more time, but I also want to show some of my tuning settings that I have on the C46 um, because a lot of people have been asking me about the setup of the car and the setups of some of my cars. Ooh, I had to get off the brake there so I didn't smash into the wall. I think the tunnel is pretty easy to stay in drift, except for when you uh, slow down a little bit too much so we can start it on the latter part uh, when we get out of the tunnel and just try and get get it on this down slope 
except we were probably going to smack the wall there. So, like I said, you just got to do these bank, these long sweeping turns are the easiest ones I found to get it at. And you just have to make sure you keep the drift without smacking into the wall. And when it comes to switchbacks, you can only do one way and flick it back. And then you have to drift a little bit of a distance after you flick it back that way in order for it to not give you that fishtail fault. Because uh, that fishtail penalty will instantly negate any distance that you've already started. So that is my easiest tip for trying to get this uh, Hakon sponsorship is to make sure if you do do switchbacks, you only go one way and then drift a good distance the other way. That way you do not lose your points. So that's one tip that I have. Now, if you do have the sponsorship already, you should be getting it back when uh, Torque Drift released an update to fix the uh, sponsorship glitching. So we're going to try and get this on the uphill. So like I said, we can do one switch this way, switch back the other way. If I would have gotten in drift, we would have been fine. But like you can only do like one way, flick the other way, and then you have to drift a good distance. And then you can flick it back the other way. But you got to make sure it goes from drift switch to drift before you switch back. Otherwise, you will get the fishtail. So we can go one way, flick back. It's got to go drift. But see, it wasn't long enough, so we got the fishtail penalty. That's the biggest thing um, that you got to watch out for. If you have a car with a lot more power, you could probably drift these uh, these arcs without even... Uh, having to do any switchbacks because uh, you probably have enough power to just rip through the tunnel sections without like having to switch it back one way and switch it back the other way. Drift a little bit so it says drift. You can switch it back, switch it back that way. We're on a close call run. But so th that's my biggest tip for getting like the, say the Hakones. You can just, if you can get this smooth section down here, then you should be good to go. I've been able to get it multiple times on this downhill. Um, I don't know why I'm not able. I'm going a little bit too quick right now, trying to get a, a little bit too aggressive on some of these uh, some of these turns, which is actually counter countering what oof countering what I am trying to accomplish. There we go. And break that one so we don't go too far forward. Then we'll switch it back. Stay on throttle. There we go. Now, as long as I can keep a steady run through this part, I should be able to get it through here. Stay on the handbrake long so we don't smack ourselves into the wall. We have to do a quick switch back there and there to keep ourselves in angle. So we should have been able to get it here through this down section get to the bridge and we should be able to straighten up and we should be good there we go papadakis racing 100 meter hakone drift if you start up top and you make your way to the bridge you definitely if you can drift that entire time you will definitely have that that sponsorship hands down so uh, luckily i was able to get it for you guys right there so like i said the sponsorships are glitched but they should be fixed here soon. So I know a lot of people have been asking me what my setup is on my E46 when it comes to what are my settings. So my E46, we are running a stroked LS1 for for performance engine wise. I probably need a bigger motor because it's saying I'm uh, exceeding my power. Um, but I think the main thing people want to know is for we are running 0.3 and negative 0.2 for our clutch and then i wish it was an easy way to do all this and then for ecu we are running 5000 rpms 1285 rpm red line and we are running the aem infinity series 5. so for the turbo we are running a 18 pounds of boost which is probably way more than we should be running but you know what the car is telling me I'm running way too much. So as for an angle kit, we are running a pro angle kit. I actually have it at 60 degrees of angle. Bumped that up to 65. Did not know it was only running 60. So we are running 7.5 degrees of camber, negative. Negative one, uh, half degree of toe, 7 caster. So that's what we're running for our angle kit. As for our front suspension, I am running 0.11 and 13 grams of stiffness. 
Um, I know some people are pro some people have different settings, but this is just what I found works for me. Um, as for the front, I am running uh, a little bit wider of a track, running nine inch wheels in the front with 35 millimeter profile. So, and as for the rear, for the angle kit, we are running negative one six four and sixteen one sixteenth of toe. So, this is just my E forty six setup, and for suspension, we're running eleven point eleven and uh, eleven kilograms. So, for our rear diff, we are running eighty percent and final drive of four point six eight. And um, what else are we running in the rear? Oh, for rear alloys, I gotta get to the alloys. There we go. We are running a 1.7, 30, and a 10 inch wide rear wheel. So we're running a little bit smaller of a profile, but we're running a wider wheel. So they kind of uh, look the same and are pretty much the same diameter. So for body kit wise, we are running zero downforce all the way around. So that is my E46 setup. Um, as for my S14, I have shown my S14 setup before. Uh, it hasn't really changed much from what it was before. So the e the S14 is pretty much the same, except we got some, uh, you know, baller wheels on there now, some uh, deep dish gangster wheels. Uh, the S15 is just still, if you notice, I have one stock, one aftermarket, one import and one pro car two of those are in the uh, pro uh, drift king ranking so that's just a quick little video for you guys a uh, little bit of help on the sponsorship for the hakone because i know a lot of people have been asking me that um and there's there's a lot of other um questions for sponsorships like how to get them and stuff it's you know a lot of them can be done in practice like the hakone one now for this one door dives 35 door dives as long as it says door dive, then um, you're getting that point. So I just wanted to bring this quick video out to you guys about the uh, some of the sponsorships and how to get like that hook on. The setup for my A46 and the let you guys know Torque Drift is working on the fix for the sponsorship reset. Uh, hopefully they will have it this week. So as you guys know, follow me on Facebook, Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram. All that's found in the description box below. Hopefully uh, you guys are direct messaging me if you have questions, and I, I try to respond to every single one of them. So until next time, guys, I'm Evil Rabbit. I'm out.